Hi, this is 3D Visualizer, a VR application to look at volumetric data. And here we are looking at a medical data set, primarily because I'm going to be giving a, a lecture at our med school in about an hour and I want to show this video. So here we have a patient who uh, showed up at a Canadian emergency room with a very bad headache and we are going to look at uh, why that was the case. At the moment you can see the outside, uh, you can see the skin and you can see the soft tissue and so what you're already noticing is that there's uh, quite a lot of swelling on this right side here compared to the left side, so that's probably something that's wrong there. Uh, don't worry about the, the head being cut off here and there and there, that's just the way the data was cropped that of course didn't look like that in reality. So now to look at the inside, I'm going to adjust the way how this data set is drawn um, by changing the opacity that is assigned to different data values, in this case tissue density. So I'm going to make the soft tissue more and more transparent and we can see now the, uh, the skull, the bones, and you can still see sort of this faint outline uh, of, the, of the skin. And so now we can see what is really going on here. Now, uh, this technique is called volume rendering. Uh, it is good at getting a, a complete overview over the data, but it is sometimes a bit too fuzzy to see what's going on in detail. I'm going to combine this with a different visualization method. Um, I'm just going to assign this to a button here. Um, and then I can reach in and I can create a so-called isosurface, which allows me to select specifically the boundary surface between the bone and soft tissue, which ought to be right about here. Uh, and that will allow us to get a closer look at what is going on. I'm now going to turn off the volume renderer for the moment um, to get a better look. And we also don't need the map anymore. So now we just have a regular old surface. This again is about the boundary surface between the bone and soft tissue. And now we can see what is going on here. Let me create another tool. Oops, there we go. Um, so we have, uh, you can see we have a fracture right there. Oops, that didn't work. We have a fracture right here. So there's the, the, the bone connecting the upper jaw uh, to the nose uh, is pushed in and broken you can see we have a pretty big fracture right here where the lower part of the eye socket uh, is pushed back. You can also see that this fracture goes all the way down to the root line of the teeth, so that's a big gap right there. Uh, we can measure the exact displacement. I can use an annotation tool, where is it, right here, uh, to measure the speedy position of this particular fracture by just putting a measurement marker right in there. I don't know if you can see that. That's the 3D position of that point. Um, but I can also measure the displacement uh, across the across that fracture by putting a measurement point on here, Oops. putting one on here and putting one on here, and we're getting the displacement to about 5.3 millimeters, which is pretty significant. And then if you look over here, you see that the upper part of the eye socket is also broken, so this part uh, of the bone is supposed to go into this hole here. Um, so we have this fracture going on this way, or thereabouts. Uh, if I measure displacement up here, then this turns out to be, oops, wrong button, this turns out to be approximately five and a half, 5.7 millimeters. And then as we go over here, we can look at the cheekbone. And this is not supposed to look like that. You can see that the cheekbone uh, is fractured here uh, and here. And the whole thing is just pushed back. This whole part of the bone is pushed back which is why it caused a fracture land there. And in this case, we can go in and measure the angle um, by drawing, by putting a measurement point. Whoops, again, wrong button. Uh, it just doesn't matter. Let's do it this way and then that way. And then we can move this guy back where it belongs. And we can see that now this bone forms an angle of almost 90 degrees, 107 degrees to be precise. If you compare it with the other side, you can see this is what it's supposed to look like. Uh, nice and smooth going across, not bent like that. So this is a pretty traumatic head injury. This is a, a teenager who fell over the handlebars of his mountain bike. Uh, so he had some, uh, some significant surgery, but as far as I know, uh, he's fine now. But yeah, I imagine it must have hurt pretty badly. So the point being is that uh, when you normally look at, uh, at CT data like this one, you would be looking at individual slices. We can do that as well. Let me change it over. Slice, and I'm going to make yet another tool. Here we go. And so now, let me hide the isosurface for a moment. 
Uh, and then if I hold my hand in there and push a button, I can now create a slice. And at this point, now the slices are more or less aligned with how they were originally collected by the CAT scan and then stacked back up into a 3D volume. And so if you drag a slice to, which is more or less a traditional way of how you would look at these kind of data, uh, you can't really, you can see what is going on. You can see that there's a fracture right here because there's a, well, there's a displacement between those two bones, but it's just a 2D cross section. So you can't really tell what the three dimensional shape around that is unless you're really well trained in that. I can of course make another cross section like this at an angle, which might help a little bit, but still we're only looking at 2D planes. And so at least for me, it is much easier um, to look at this as a surface where you can clearly see what's going on. And the, the useful thing about 3D visualizer or generally about looking at 3D volumetric data in a VR system is that we can look at it in this three-dimensional sense. Um, because we are not projecting the 3D data onto a screen, we're looking at it in physical space. We don't have any distortion. There are no angles that are distorted. Everything is correct. This angle that I measured to be 107 degrees looks to be 107 degrees. Distances appear correct. So it's a very, very useful way uh, to get a lot of information and knowledge and quantify the data, like these positions, distances, and angles, about 3D volumetric data sets like this particular medical scan. Thank you for watching.